guys back with another video. You know, about three months ago, I recorded basically my first crypto mining video, and I've learned so much <laughs> since then. It's pretty amazing. But I thought it would be a good idea to update this first video that I made, which was not that it was misinformation, but it was probably not the best guidance, if you will, for overclocking your 1080 Ti to mine Ethereum. So I wanted to update that a little bit, talk about some things that I've learned and show you the settings that I have today and what I'm doing today as far as using my 1080 Ti to mine Ethereum. So let's take a look at that real quick. I'm going to have to switch to my camera view because I don't want the OBS recording to affect the hash rate that I'm getting when I make the changes. So let's take a look at that. All right, guys, so we have our test set up here, but a couple things before we get started that are really important to know when mining a cryptocurrency with your GPU, especially, well, we're going to talk specifically about mining Ethereum with the 1080 Ti, but these, this kind of goes across the board. All GPUs are not created equal. There's this thing called the silicone lottery, depending on how, which silicon you get in your GPU, it's going to make a difference. You'll watch videos of people overclocking two 3090s, for example, and one will have a hash rate of 100 mega hash per second, and the other will have a hash rate of 97 at the same settings. So every GPU is different. You have to remember that. So my settings are going to be different than yours. While I'm saying that, make sure you take the disclaimer in the beginning of the video to heart and stay within the parameters of the manufacturer for overclocking or underclocking. You're using your GPU for gaming primarily. You don't want to mess up, mess that up. So be very careful and, and be educate yourself before making any changes. So the second thing though is reduce power. In other words, the less power you're using, the higher your profits, right? So if you're using less electricity to create more hash, then you're making more money, right? And it also results in lower temperatures usually and less wear and tear on your card, right? The other thing is Ethereum's algorithm, Etash, really likes memory clock increase and is less interested in GPU. And we'll talk about that in a second. So the goal, though, is to find the right balance of power usage, GPU clocking, and memory clocking, okay? And then we'll talk about this thing called the pill separately. We'll talk about that separately. Keeping this in mind, that all GPUs are not created equal, and reduced power equals higher profits, Let's talk about this. So right now we're, we're mining using T-Rex Miner. We're on Ezil because I mine dual, I dual mine Ethereum and Zill on Ezil using T-Rex, okay? And I have no clocking on my 1080 Ti. You can see I'm at 100% power, zero overclock on the GPU and zero overclock on the memory, okay? I'm using 177 watts at this K, in this case and getting 30.7 mega hash. The highest I got here was uh, 30.97, all right? So around thir between 30 and 31 mega hash uh, mining Ethereum. So that's not great for this card and there's ways to improve that. And the way to do that is by generally decreasing the GPU, okay? And increasing the memory clock. Now I just wanna show you an experiment on power usage. So let's just say that we bring this up to, we add 400, we just increase the clock on memory by 400 and don't touch the power. We stay at 100% power. You're gonna see a couple things happen here. One is your power usage is gonna go up, your mega hash will go up, and also your temperatures are gonna go up. You see there, memory just went up a degree. And you're gonna to start to see these rise. GP, they're all gonna to start to rise up. And you can see here, now we're using 191 watts. We're also getting 31.61 and this may climb as it goes along, but that's uh, 20 watts more, almost 20 watts more, which I guess it's uh, less than that, it's uh, 14 watts more than we were using, and this may even increase even more as with this next pop here. Let's just take a look and see. All right, so now we're at 192 watts, 33.48, but we can do much better than that. All right, we can get this wattage down and this mega hash up and that's what we're trying to do okay and the way you do that is through a series of tests using these two the power and using the gpu and memory so let's just say i go down to 80 percent power okay apply that now we're going to watch this here you're going to see the power go down but the hash rate may stay around 35 because we've got our memory increased okay but we're using less power and then our temps are going to start to go down too 
So let's just take a look at that with this next iteration down here. So we were at 192. All right, so now we're at 192. 35 so we didn't really decrease it decreased power. It was a 20% decrease So that maybe this may go down a little bit more in the next iteration. We shall see We'll take this down to 75 that might make a difference All right, there we go 190 So it is decreasing that was probably from the first set this may go down even further and the hash rate is has really hasn't has stayed about the same because we increased the the memory clock. So let's just check out the next iteration here, see if it goes down from that change to 75%. All right, there, 182. So that's down uh, 8 watts, and then we've got, we're still about 35.9, so really no change there. So there we reduce the power, and we're still mining the same hash rate. So we're making more profit, right? We're using less power on the card, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to go through this process. Now, let's say I bring this down. I go minus because, again, remember, Ethereum really doesn't like, doesn't need the GPU clock. So let's say I go minus 100 here. We'll hit that apply. What I'm trying to show you here is as you make these modifications, very small modifications, you're going to start to see a improvement in hash rate and a reduction in memory. So the numbers that for this particular claw card that I kind of fell upon that after much testing, okay, was right here. 70 power, minus 150 on the GPU, and plus 950 on the memory, okay? And that got me the best combination of power usage a mega hash production and temps. All my temps are generally, you'll start to see actually, you know, these temps start to cycle down here. The power temp and the GPU temp. You see now it was 54 before, now it's 51. All right. So now our power is at 176. We're getting to 3595. And you're going to start to see this mega hash increase. This takes time. It's not something that you can do immediately. It's an experiment that you have to go through. Again, you want to stay within the guidelines. So now right there, we are at 173 power, down three watts, and we've got, now we're at 37.37. I should be able to get this up to over 38 at this setting. Now you may be even get your, able to get your power even lower than 70, but 70 is probably a good number. There we go, 38.16 at 173. So 38.16 is 8 mega hash above what this was running at stock settings, which is pretty pretty darn good. And a good number for a 1080 Ti non-pill. You may be able to get this up a little higher by increasing the power, okay? But for me, I'd rather keep the power lower, keep the temps below 60 C. This way I'm comfortable that the card's not getting beat up. I mean, you could run a clock high, much higher uh, within spec, but I tend, I like to see those three squares blue. EVGA cards are, are known for their cooling capabilities, so I'm not too worried about that. But again, you know, I'm dual-purposing this GPU. I use it for gaming, for flight simulation, which is its real main purpose. And I'm also using it at night to mine Ethereum. So... This is the philosophy that I've sort of come up with, right? Keep the wear and tear down, keep the power consumption down, try to keep the, get the mega hash up. So I'm comfortable and happy with 38. Now, if you want to go a step beyond that, you can do what they call something called the pill, all right? And the pill is uh, the, the ETH enlargement pill. Uh, they talk about it at night on nice hash by increasing performance by as much as 50% not always 50%, it depends, okay? You can go to Nice Hash or do a search on Oh God and Ethereum, or ETH enlargement pill, do a search on that right there and you'll find it, okay? And now I've used the pill, I've tried it, and I'm able to get up to about 46, 47 mega hash, so it's a pretty nice improvement. The problem I have with the pill is, because I have a 14.4, 144 megahertz monitor for gaming 
for some reason it messes up the the refresh rate on the monitor and I'm not able to after I use the pill I'm not able to set it to 144 and still have to like redo and reset stuff to get the monitor back to where it is and it's a super pain in the ass so I choose not to use that if you're comfortable you may want to try it the pill um, it, it, it'll definitely increase your mega hash but personally, I'm not comfortable with doing that. I mean, if I would, if I had a dedicated rig of 1080 Ti's, I would probably use it. Now you see here how it went down to 36, 35, and now it's going back up to 37. And that's because when I opened up this this window, okay, this GPU that I'm using is also powering this monitor, so it's putting more pressure on the on the GPU when I'm when I've got this big white screen and it's got to produce all this light. And then, but once I close it it'll the, the the hash rates go back up so basically you want to keep any unnecessary windows closed if you're using your gpu to also power your monitor uh, what i do at night is i have two monitors and my second monitor is powered by the motherboard graphics so what i do is i turn off my 4t4 monitor and i just have my 1080p monitor running which is powered by the the motherboard so that way the gpu is not serving the monitor and serving mining so sort of sort of isolate things anyway that's an explanation of how to configure your 1080 ti to get the most out of it when mining ethereum i hope this was helpful certainly a lot more information than the last video and highly because i've learned a lot over the last three months so i hope this video was helpful uh, hit that like button if you like what you saw today. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more cryptocurrency information. As I learn, you guys learn. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.